Good morning, good morning. There it is. Oh, I like this song. Good morning, how you doing? How you doing? Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite songs. I love Hill Song United. This, but this is their project back from 2013. Song is There's Nothing Like. Oh, I like the song. I'll just give a, give a quick listen to it, okay? Listen to it. It's so cool. The guitar is so awesome. Ah. As I get myself together. I hope you're doing good. You hear that guitar? Ah, it's so neat. Coming on, you're grabbing your notes, your ink pen. I love being on here. Thank you, my friend. I love the song. For some radical love. It's time to feel the radical love of God. I understand that uh, reckless love song. You know, oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God that it chases us down and, and it doesn't stop till we're found and it leaves the 99. So. Yeah, you know what? When I one thing I found out, my friend, when we begin to tackle these kinds of issues, those things begin to manifest around us also. So it's not surprising, okay? But one word of advice I will give you is to walk it out. Just walk it out slowly. Be determined to be responsive, not reactionary. You can't, this is the season we cannot react to any. Tell me that you have a fur baby without telling me you have a fur baby. I'm going to have to take my jacket off. I'm already wound up. Listen, when you begin to deal with um, deliverance issues, those things begin to manifest. Walk it out. Do not be reactionary. Be responsive. Learn to just sit back in the love of God and ask Holy Spirit, what is happening? Do not react in fear. Do not react in anger. Do not 
react with fire. Just sit back in it and say, okay, Holy Spirit, what is happening? There's something called, I love this song. I'm going to change it. Um, let me uh, tell you this one thing. I hope you're ready to write already. Okay. Oh, I like that song. Let me change the music though. So, there is in um, deliverance circles, deliverance terms, it's called opposite confirmation. Okay. Opposite confirmation means that when you begin to tackle a particular uh, issue, area of your life, healing wise, the enemy comes with that very thing that you are pressing into healing for. Just like my friend just put in there about uh, her husband wanting uh, to separate. So that is an opposite confirmation from the enemy. Now, one good thing about opposite confirmations is it allows you to understand that the enemy is angry with you because you're on the right path. Yeah. So remember to write that down. It's called opposite confirmation. Also, listen, while you guys are hopping on, let me know if you went to the website to get the notes. Did anybody go there to get to the notes? I know I got a lot of stuff listed and I got the song listed. Hop on here and let me know. And, um, yeah, let me know if you got the notes or get the notes today. Thank you, my friend. Uh, there's a couple other things that I'm going to post there. There's so many, there's so much information out there, but, and I don't want to overload you guys. So, um, I'm going to use that information that's posted there for the two weeks. And, uh, also... Uh, thank you for the love gift. Some guys are cash after me. Some blessings and seed. And this is the wonderful thing. That that seed, wherever you sow it, it there's just going to be a return in your life uh, because of the seed that you sow. And I, I'm, I, don't, I never ask for seed. I do have the information in there because some people has asked me, Hey, way from Trinidad. Um, good morning uh, or afternoon or whatever time it is there. Hmm. At any rate, um, but you guys are more than welcome. And if not, if you're here to get this seed, that's fine too. There's so many things to be taught and so many things to learn. So, I'm letting you know, boo. I'm here to learn with you. Okay. I ain't throwing nobody under the bus. I am here to learn too. But let me tell you, my yesterday was a lot better than it had been in a while. As a matter of fact, I played this song. This song is also available on my website because you can't find it anymore. The original version. Uh, the 2008 version. They have another version, but I don't like to overly process music, if that makes sense. Let me get a sip. My throat is dry. I need a, where's my cough drop or something? But I don't think it's that great to be doing that and talking anyway. Anyway, <clears throat> we are talking about uh, rejection. We're talking about healing from rejection, healing from an orphan heart. I love, love, love the hunger here. My apostle, my spiritual parents said one way you can really know where God wants you to be because there will be a hunger in that place. Bronx, New York just chimed in. You can shout your state out, shout out where you are. Thank you. Bronx and Trinidad hopped on here also. You have to follow the hunger. 
you have to follow where the hunger is and there's hunger here and i like it it says okay yep it's early in the morning and there's virginia new york and iowa oh my god all over these here united states there's another iowa that hopped on here thank you guys make sure you are getting ready there's georgia in the house Hey, Georgia is on my mind. Michigan, I'm in Michigan, boo. Listen, we're going to have to do a regional thing. All right, upstate New York. Incredible. Y'all are hungry, and it's early. But you're hungry for the right thing. All right, there go Houston in the hose. Listen, are y'all ready? Somebody just say ready. You ready? We're going to do a review from yesterday. Then we're going to get into today. So, uh, like I said, get the notes. Make sure you you have to, okay? We have to carve out time with the Father. And get this. Get this. Thank you, all right? I'm, I'm ready to go, too. So, listen. We have to carve out specific times with the Father. Number one. But understand, you can talk to him all day. He does not mind. You can talk to him on your lunch break. You can talk to him while you're working. Holy Spirit is ever present to help us. And this, listen, honey, this got me crying. When was it? Was it yesterday morning? Or the night before? I think it was the night before. Let's see. I cannot believe it's Thursday already. Where? I, I don't get it. It was Tuesday night. I was getting my bath and everything. And just talking to the Lord and excited. And then I happened across the scripture. Let me find it. Where Jesus was talking. Let me find it. Good morning. Good morning. All right. All right. I was uh, John 14 and 18. Let me grab my paper Bible, baby. Because too much Bible technology will make you spiritually lazy. Y'all better get your paper Bible back out. What my other one? This is, I'm happy. If you can, every, every year, every couple years, get you a new Bible. Even if it's a new Bible of the same Bible, get a new one. Okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, John 14 and 18. Thank you so much for having seen the videos. I absolutely, I love to pray. And as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to do um, a series on praying too, but I would like to do that. I don't know if I want to do that in person to just do some videos. You guys let me know. Maybe I'll... Excuse me. Let me know what you think. I want to do and give you guys some information on prayer. So I'm going to start showing my resources uh, as a background on what I, uh, what I have. A lot of books by John, Apostle John Eckhart books by Dr. Cindy Trim on prayer, uh, Kim Daniels, Chuck Pierce. There's a lot of guys. I'm going to start using, showing their names as resources because this is the time we got to be equipped. We've got to be equipped. And so uh, the video, all right, you said, uh, yeah, those uh, yeah, Kenneth Hagen, he's another one. There are so many mighty, mighty men and women of prayer. We've got to learn how to pray, okay, and pray effectively. So, and pray prophetically also to where you're just beginning to hear Holy Spirit and pray. So, I'm at the scripture, John 14. John 14, verse number 18. Let's see what that says. Oh, this is good. 
So I was thinking about this scripture. Um, John 14, chapter number 18. And to answer your question, I am not Catholic. Jesus was not Catholic. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was not Catholic. Ain't nothing wrong with being Catholic. I'm just letting you know. Christians are those who walk and live after Christ. And I know how far the history goes back and we could get into that whole theological debate, but I'm not going to do it. I'm here to teach the word and principles of the word. At any rate, all right. So, John 14 and 18, it says, well, first of all, let me stop. Holy Spirit, let me acknowledge you first of all. Because you are the mighty counsel. You're the only wise God, our Savior. To you be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. God, you said for us to acknowledge you in all of our ways. And you would direct our path. God, I thank you. I'm switching songs. I hear Holy Spirit say switch songs. Let me see where you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, okay. This song is called Take Me Back. By Maverick City Music. So I love to pray and hear Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is saying it's time for us to go back to our first love. You can still be going to church and doing all the religious stuff. It just be doing those things as a religious practice. And you've left them in your heart. He says it's time to do some stuff again. It's time to focus back on him. Focus back on his word. So listen, this scripture, oh honey, I read the scripture and it made me cry. I thought about the scripture and it made me cry even in this time. Okay, so John 14 and 18. It says, this is Jesus talking. I will not leave you as orphans. Comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn, helpless. I will come back to you. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. He didn't leave us as orphans. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. How many of you have felt like an orphan in your life? He said, I will not leave you as orphans. But we've all felt like an orphan. It's all innately in all of us. So let me get to some of these points. Get 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 some music by Maverick City Music. It is a it is a it is a new it is a new sound. It's a new sound from a raw heart of sonship. It is a new sound. From in a raw heart of warning the Father. That's all I want. I want the Father and I want to point you to Him. Okay, so listen. 
Yesterday, we started dealing with the spirit of rejection in the name of Jesus. So like I was saying, Father, I do thank you because you said in your, in your word in John 14 and 18 that you would not leave us as orphans. Good morning, everybody hopping on here. We are not orphans. We have a father. Yeah. So let's get started on this, okay? So yesterday... <clears throat> Let me turn back to my notes in my book. Hopefully, you, some of you guys were able to get the notes. And you're going to get them today. Monday, I started uh, talking the reality that we're the most toxic person that we will ever have to deal with on a regular basis because we can talk ourselves in and out of anything now that spirit of rejection is the thing that talks you out of the good things let that sit right there for a minute that spirit of rejection tells you mm -mm, girl no because they don't like you anyway the spirit of rejection convinces you, nope, you might as well not go. And loving is easy. So when we started dealing with the uh, spirit of rejection on yesterday, okay, uh, rejection victimizes its prey by causing them to feel worthless and unwanted, okay? Uh, we also discussed that some people that call themselves shy are actually not shy. They're just so rejection based that they have uh, shut their voices down. Who felt shut down? I know I did for a lot of years. I was very shy. I was very withdrawn within myself because in my own estimation, my voice wasn't valid because it was never validated. Gone are the times when we not validate our children's voice. We have to validate their voice. We have to allow them time and space to express what's going on in their heart because they have very deep emotions, just like us. But we have to allow them to have a safe landing place so they can express what it is that's going on in their hearts. And we can't afford to put words in their mouth either. I really believe that that's some of the issue. That may be some of the issue that's going on with a lot of the, <clears throat> excuse me, very young children that are dealing with gender dysmorphic issues. I mean, how are you going to be, how are you going to be two years old and you're expressing that you feel like the opposite sex? Where does, does that make sense? Where does that even come from? Unless it may be a parent that may be even suggesting that. Now, I'm sure there are some cases, some medical cases where in fact, it starts really young, but by and large, with the large numbers that are going on now, if you have a little boy who are playing with dresses, with mom's makeup, because that's what they see. And so because they want to play with or gravitate toward it does not necessarily mean that, oh my goodness, maybe they think that they are the opposite sex, when in fact, it could be a demonic, there's my friend, a demonic suggestion sold into that child's life. So, and based on the, the, the wanting, the need to be accepted, the child most likely would go with it. I know for myself, um, there was one point where when I cleaned a lot as a kid, maybe that's why I don't like to clean now, but I cleaned a lot as a child because my mother liked it. And so I gravitated 
cleaning. I gravitated toward cleaning more because she liked it. It wasn't because I liked cleaning. It was because she liked cleaning. Does that make sense? It wasn't because I liked cleaning. I didn't like cleaning. She liked cleaning. And because she liked cleaning and it pleased her. People who are rejection based tend to be people pleasers. Does that make sense? I was I was trying to please her, not only her, but then other people that I came in contact with, friends. You know, my friend, hey, my little kid, can you give me $5? And I would do that. Why? Because I wanted to please them because I wanted them in my life. Teachers at school, you know, the kid who was always cleaning the chalkboard, it was a form of trying to gain the unmet need for acceptance and love because the pats on the back. The you did a good job. All of those um, conveyed to me. All of those fed an unmet, unmet need to be needed. Everybody wants to be needed. Everybody, everybody needs to be needed in some way, shape, or form. It's, a, it's an innate need in us. We want to be needed. And when we're not, we begin to run after it, trying to pull it from people. Excuse me. A lot of people are in horrible, abusive relationships because of trying to fulfill an unmet need. To be loved, to be wanted. And not only that, to be told by a very abusive person, nobody wants you. So it becomes a very toxic back and forth. Okay. Thank you guys. Come on, y'all. Y'all see, this is this is what I'm talking. I'm talking about hunger. I'm talking about people who really want answers. People who are really searching for Holy Spirit answers. Yes, honey. Go to therapy. Yes, honey. Take your medicine. But yes, honey, get healed in your heart. All right, so listen. So not only that victimization that happens through rejection, but also self-pity that comes through rejection. And I've done that. Oh my gosh, I just can't stop eating. What's wrong with me? Garnering or trying to use the self-pity on God. The man at the well laying there for 38 years. And I'm wondering, how did he... Use the bathroom. Who enabled him all that time? Ain't that a good question? Who were his enablers that enabled him to stay there? Self-pity and victimization is also a way of pulling in an unmet need for attention. All right, so we went through some of the fruits of rejection. All right, I'll go through these and then I'll get into the rest of the list, okay? And then start on some answers. So today and tomorrow, I cannot believe tomorrow's Friday already. So today and tomorrow, we're going to try to get to the answers. And these answers are not a one and done. Meaning you're not going to read through it and you're going to be, hey, I'm, I'm done, I'm healed. No, there's a process. So I pray you guys are taking notes, okay? Excuse me. Go to the site and get the notes. Okay. Uh, fruits of rejection. How do you know that you are walking in a manifestation of rejection? Okay, number one, you find yourself comparing yourself or your uh, circumstances or situations to other people. You never seem to measure up. So comparison is a big part of your life. Okay, you feel like you missed out on life's opportunities and now it's too late. That's number two. You feel like you've missed out on life, life's opportunities. And I see this. I, I And I see this. I mean, see it. 
where those of us who are, you know, walking into our 50s, for me, what I've learned is that you don't start really having fun with life until about 45. I mean, you know what I'm saying. As far as the information that you've learned, um, all of the ways that you're moving forward. Uh, most of the time, the kids are adults and they've moved out and we've learned so much. And so now we can begin to have fun. But listen, and I know that can happen at any age. Hear what I'm saying. But I've seen classmates that are in wheelchairs and riding around in the buggy at the store. Now, I know medical things do happen. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you're just walking into 50 and it looks like you are a rough 80. That's what I'm talking about. Not because of medical issues, just because of poor thinking and poor living. And I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. But the fact remains, you've just started to live. Why are you in a wheelchair? Self-pity. And like I said, not throwing anybody under the bus. Medical things do happen. But when I talk to a fellow classmate, and it sounds like, they sound like they're 80. A rough 80. <laughs> a rough 80. And I'm looking at them like, I know we went to school together. Why you act like you're 80? You're not a you're not a rough 80. It's just starting. All right, so anyway. So you feel like you missed out on life's opportunity. And that now it uh is just too late for you. Okay? So that's one of the manifestations. Hold on a second here. Okay. All right, number three, no amount of encouragement is enough to convince you of your word. I have a sister like that. My sister is two years younger than me, and no amount of encouragement helps her. So rejection-based. And it's very, listen, it's very draining to be around a person who is steeped in rejection. That's why when you begin to walk out this healing process, your friendships are going to change because your eyes are going to be open to what God wants you to see. And you're going to begin to see, you're draining me. Listen, there's sometimes I make decisions on whether or not to even engage in her or take her somewhere with me because of how draining it is you can listen let me hear this 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 tip right here this tip right here you cannot Talk a stuck person out of their victimization. I'm going to give you just a minute to write that down. I'm going to say that one more time. You cannot talk a stuck person out of their victimization. It will drain you. You cannot talk a stuck person out of their victimization. You cannot stand there at the opening of their cave and pull them out. People have to come out on their own. And this is a very hard pill to swallow, to go along with that. You're going to have to accept the fact that some people 
are content with being stuck. Yep, this answers your question, sis. You're going to have to, you're going to have to get peace with that. And get this, it's going to be some people that you love. Is going to, you're going to have to be okay with the fact that some people are content with being stuck, number one. And that you can't pull them out. They have to come out on their own. Now, how do they come out on their own? The way they do anything else? Let me tell you, we can do anything we want to do. Where my hands at? If blind people are running marathons, and people with no legs are swimming in the Paralympics, and people who cannot use their hands writing novels with a pencil in between their teeth. Come on. People who are paralyzed are driving. People with cerebral palsy are lifting weights. You can do whatever you want to do. If you make it a priority, you'll get it done. That, that, listen, that is even in the arena. Now, if there's, if there is extreme mental issues, that's different. But when you can get up and go to any store you want to go to and go to work and shop and do whatever you want to do, you can get unstuck if you want to get unstuck. If it is a priority, you're going to get it done. And I know I got that right. Because those same, get the, those same people that them borrowed $50 from us is the same people standing in the lottery line at the store and at the fast food place. And we standing there looking at them like, wait a minute, don't you owe me $50? All right, I ain't got nobody helping me. You can do whatever you want to do. If you make it a priority, you're going to get it done. But listen, there's a benefit from being stuck. Yeah, don't nobody want to help me this morning. There's a benefit from being stuck. If you're stuck, you don't have to accept personal responsibility for your life. There's a benefit in being stuck. I can sit back and blame shit. It's because of what my mama did to me when I was eight. Baby, you 52. How do I know? I got a sister, both of them. And I ain't talking about I'm all that and piece of cheesecake. I know that, but you gotta be willing to do the work. People that have resided to be content with being stuck refuses to do the work. Faith without what? Faith without what? Exactly. Faith without works is dead. What is the works? Getting in Holy Spirit process, being willing to stay in Holy Spirit process, and my goodness, being obedient. I don't want to do that. It'd be like, what? Listen, how long have I been trying to give away this confession book? <laughs> how long have I been trying to give away this confession book and telling people? It works. The word of God works. Get that confession book and just start hammering at it. He says it's her, his word is a hammer. Start hammering at that jacked up mindset you got and hammer at it. That's the word. 
It ain't, I don't feel no different. You ain't gonna feel it, but your mind gonna change. Hammer at it. Let me find that scripture. It's like your word is a hammer. I'm getting wound up. It is too early to get wound up already. Listen, my sister is confessing. That confession book works. And it's full of the word of God. Keep saying, get the book, get the book, get the book, get the book. You got the book. Nah, I ain't got the book. I'm like, I'm get. listen. Let me find this scripture here. Thy word is a hammer. So we got to write that scripture down too. Let me write it down. Honey, I got, ooh, honey, I got wound up really quick. So the other scripture, what was the other scripture? The other scripture was John, the last scripture for today. John 14 and what was it? 20, 14 and 18? I think so. And this is a uh, Thursday. Tick. Talk. The game is locked. Okay, and it is two eleven. Excuse me. And this one is uh, J uh Jeremiah twenty three and twenty nine. Yep. Okay, fourteen and eighteen. Thank you, my friend. And this is um Jeremiah. 23 and 29. And yes, all of my information is in my bio. That's why I stopped giving it out. I'm like, go to the bio. Go to the bio. No, it's fruitandseed.com. One word. Let's, let's read this scripture. I'm just going to read it through my iPad here. Okay. This is Jeremiah 23 and 29. Okay, uh, King James Version is, is not my word like fire. His word is like fire, says the Lord. Come on. And like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. That, that, that's enough right there. That is enough. He said, my word is like fire. And my word is like a hammer. What thought process do you need to have burnt up in your life? Burnt up in your mind. Man, I was so rejection based. Rejection controlled my life. Honey, yesterday the Lord told me, do not eat like you're rejected. You don't have to sit there and eat everything. Until you're about ready to explode. He said, eat like a son. Don't eat like an orphan. He said, you're not rejected. You're not an orphan. Don't eat like it. Don't eat like this is the last time you ever going to eat today. It ain't. A couple bites and be done with it, Lacey. You don't have to be in relationships and act like orphans. But my God, when two orphans marry... My God, that's where husband and wives compete with each other and one up each other all the time and can't celebrate each other's accomplishments and don't root and cheer for each other because an orphan heart is in the mix. Somebody's an orphan in the relationship. What orphan thinking needs to be broken up in your life? Rejection, abandonment, low self-esteem. All of those are mindsets. All of those are strongholds. All of those are bricks in your thinking that prevents you from being a son fully and fully accepting the father's love. We're like, oh, God don't love me because I'm such a wretch. And he's like, <clears throat> I did die for you. I died for you so you could become a son. Let's go over to that scripture. Okay, that's John chapter 1. It's 
So go over to John chapter 1. Let me get my Amplified Bible. I use my paper. But I got my iPad tuned up already. John chapter 1. Is it 1 and 8? Hmm. Okay, John chapter 1. Wait. John chapter 1, verse number 12. 1 and 12. And this is the Amplify. A-M-P. The Amplify. The Amplify Classic Version. Thank you, my sis. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad that Holy Spirit led you to the slide this morning. He's always talking. I love him. He never sleeps. So, John, <clears throat> excuse me, John chapter number 1, verse number 12. But. To as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, the privilege, and the right to become the children of God. To those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. He's given us. It says when we receive him and welcome him here. We are given the authority, the power, the privilege, and the right to become sons of God. God gave up his son to, give, to get many sons. And I'm talking about all of us being his children. We have the right to become the sons of God because of what the blood of Jesus made ready for us. Listen, glory be to God. Glory be to God. You, glory be to God. You have to say out of your mouth, this is the last day that I will ever not feel enough. That is the main lying strategy of the enemy. You're not enough. That's a rejection, orphan-based mentality. And it ruled my life. It ruled my life. No matter what I did, I didn't feel like I was a good enough mother. I was a good enough wife. I was a good enough employee. I was a good enough minister. I would I would teach something and then I would go away from it and I would rack my brain the rest of the day on how stupid I felt and what I should have said and what I should have did differently and, and presentations at work and all of that. Oh my goodness, I should have did this better and I should have get that better. And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter whether or not you were told that. What do you believe? Because you know what? Pain projects. Pain vomits all over innocent people. We are accepted. Listen. Honey, God made you great, and he didn't give you an opinion about the matter. All right. You need to write that down. God made me great, and he didn't ask for my opinion. You write that down. It ain't, listen, it, it ain't arrogance. It's true. He said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He didn't ask you your opinion about it. That should make somebody happy. Honey, God made me fearful, wonderful, and beautiful. And he didn't ask for my opinion. Well, what do you, do you feel like being great and beautiful, Lacey? <laughs> no, I'm a rich guy. You're like, oh my goodness. God made you beautiful. He made you a conqueror. He didn't ask you, well, what do you, do you feel like being a conqueror today? No, I don't feel like it. <laughs> He's like, I didn't ask you. He did not ask your opinion. He did it. 
Ain't that wonderful? Because he knew that there's an enemy that will be relentlessly behind us, screaming and yelling lies. We have a relentless, evil enemy that hates everything about our father. So he hates everything about you, baby. Let me help you out. The devil do not care whether you Democrat or Republic. He hates all of us because he hates our daddy. So our daddy, like I gotta, I gotta stake some things in them because of the blood of Jesus, baby. So that when they finally get it, I did a post yesterday on Facebook that said when, and it was a woman looking at, a beautiful woman looking into the mirror. And it said the moment she accepts and believes everything Father God says about her, everything about her will change. The moment you accept, the moment you accept, we got to quit rejecting. We got to quit rejecting what God is saying about us. I ain't dead. No, I ain't. <laughs> you got to quit rejecting what God is saying about you. And start saying, this is me. We love to cheer other people on. God is saying, you got to learn to accept and believe everything he says about you. And when we do, everything about us will change. We will walk around with this understanding. Sis and bra will walk around with this understanding that it has been by his grace and his mercy. And we just open up our arms wide and we receive it. That song, I receive your love for me. I know I'm accepted. I don't have to keep looking for acceptance from people because I'm accepted by my father. I'm accepted by the creator of the whole universe. Accepts me and he loves me. So I got to look at mama and dad. I got to look at my husband, my friend, my best friend. I got to look at all these people that did not create me. Jeremiah 1 and 5 is my mission for this year. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That is the person I want to know. I want to know the me that only he knows. And it's not about a religious, a religious mindset. Like I said yesterday, the woman at the well, she went to the well and had a private conversation. And she left. She dropped everything. She dropped every ounce of rejection. That's what I'm talking about. got to receive his love, y'all. Because his love. Where's my note set? His love. His. 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 His love. His love. Eternal. That's it. That's the emptiness. Calling out in the midnight hour. Who am I and why am I here? That's the call of every person. Said yesterday, it don't make no difference who you marry, what you identify as. You ain't got that piece of the puzzle in your heart. You're going to lay down at night. You're going to numb it out. You're going to drug it out. You're going to try to sniff it and store it and shoot it up and drink it in and Netflix it away. But it is Still there, screaming on the inside of you. Who am I and why am I here? Who do I belong to? What am I doing here? What is my purpose? Why am I empty? And you know what? It ain't leaving. 
until you get to the author and the finisher of your faith. Because he put it there. God ain't mad at atheists. He's sad, but he's not mad. He is not mad. God is not mad at an atheist. He sees what's missing. And my question to them is who hurt you? Who hurt you? Because how can you not believe in someone that you say you don't believe in, but just the acknowledgement that you don't believe in him is a statement that there is a him. God ain't mad. He's not like, oh, they don't believe in me. <laughs> He's not mad at atheists. He sees what's missing. And they hear it too. Now this is it. You use drugs and alcohol to numb it. But let me know. You can hear that voice over TV. You can hear that voice over alcohol. You can hear the aching and the emptiness of the orphan heart on the inside of you screaming. Who am I? Why am I here? And who do I belong to? Those are three questions. Who am I? Why am I here? And who do I belong to? All right, let's get on. All right. You feel rejected if you're not greeted or acknowledged by leadership. You do a good job. Nobody acknowledges you. You feel some kind of way. You constantly seek for the approval of others and suffer from people pleasing. We talked a little bit about that. Listen to this. You are easily offended or embarrassed from discipline or correction. Whew. I'm going to say that again. That was number six. You are easily offended or embarrassed from discipline or correction. I'm gonna teach I'm gonna teach this particular subject um I think in March in April. And uh, so I'm going I'm to share a little bit here with you. I'm not going to be able to share all of it, but a little bit. The difference between sonship and assignment. Now, when you have been solidified, when, when you allow the love of God. See, this is that scripture. Those who fear are not made perfect in love. Now, he's not talking about perfect as far as like a perfect circle. Don't perfect circles freak you out? <laughs> I know they do me. When somebody draws a perfect circle, it kind of makes me itch on the inside. So he's not talking about perfect. He's talking about solidified and stable. Let's go over there. That's over in uh, James, I believe. Let me see. So we're talking about made perfect. Wait a minute. Okay, that is oh, okay. That's first John. First John four and eighteen, okay. I hope you guys are taking notes. I hope you guys are really learning a lot. Cause I am. So which one was that? That was number six. So I'm gonna go over there. So that's uh first John four and eighteen, okay? I'm gonna go over there in the amplify. Oh, thank you. Bless you, sis. I just got to be real. I'm like, look, look, Lord, help me. 
I mean, the season of fake and the funk is over. It's been over. All right. <clears throat> All right, so... um. Uh, 1 John 4 and 18. Let's go over to 18, okay? Ooh, wait a minute. Let's see what, so what's 17 talk about. Okay, 1 John 4 and 18. Well, let's do 16. Let's do 16 through 18. <clears throat> First John 4, 16 through 18. Okay, it says, and we know, understand, this is the amplified version, so it's meaty. Can you say meaty? It's a meaty version. Um, okay, First John 4, 16 through 18. I'm going to focus on 18, though, okay? It says, and we know, understand, recognize our conscious of. By observation and by experience and believe, adhere to and put faith in and rely on. We have to put faith in and rely on the love. Put faith in and rely on the love that God cherishes. He cherished the love we have. Listen, he cherishes. <laughs> cherishes for us. God is love. And he who dwells and continues in love dwells and continues in God, okay? And God dwells and continues in him. It says, in this union, in this union and communion with him, love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us that we may have confidence for the day of judgment with the assurance and boldness to face him. Because as he is, so are we in this world. So that means, so uh, verse 17, in this union and communion with him, love is brought to completion. So we're talking about this very pure, very raw relationship with the Lord. We're talking about no hiding anything in relationship with him. Psalms 51, verse number six. He desires truth in the inner man and in the and in the hidden parts, he will make us to know wisdom. So it's about being completely honest with God and telling him the truth about your life and where you are and not hiding. He can deal with you if you refuse to hide. If you are like, God, you know what? Look at this. Look, look at this. Okay? Look. <laughs> so listen, it says... Um, and we have confidence in the day of judgment. So this gets rid of the, oh my goodness, I don't know if I'm, if I'm going to die and go to hell. <laughs> when you're walking in this kind of a purity of relationship with the Lord, you're keeping your heart up front with him. You're keeping your heart up front with him. And you're saying, Father, this is my heart. Father, I, I want to do this. And you're telling him, God, you know what? I want to go. I want to go drink. I want to go and drink everything up. And I want to have sex with everybody that I come in contact with. But I know that's not your will. That's what I'm talking about. God, I really don't feel like reading the word right now. But I want to get close to you. I want to get close to you. This kind of real, upfront, raw relationship with the Lord. And me, on my personal terms with the Lord. Lord, I know it's not your will that I eat this whole bag of cookies, but I sure do. I want to eat it all. And then I want to go and I want to cuss people out. And I want to throat punch a few people. But I know that's not your will. What is happening? You're keeping yourself naked before the Lord. You're keeping yourself up front before the Lord. You're not being pious or, or, or you're keeping yourself up front. So listen, so this is good. <laughs> yeah, you tell them, I want to throw punch some people, but I know that's not your will. You don't want me to do that, but I really want to cut some people out. But that's not what you want me to do. You're not hiding anything. How pure is a relationship when you refuse to hide?
<laughs> Ain't that beautiful? When you say, God, I, I don't want to hide anymore. So anyway, let me finish this. Okay, so, so you we had confidence in the day of judgment and with assurance and boldness to face him. You have boldness to face him. And it's not this boldness, but there's this pure boldness. Like, because I know I'm up front with God. I told my, my son and his relationship, I said, you and your sweet girlfriend, you need to be brave enough to tell each other the truth. Yeah, I looked at so-and-so. Yeah, I told him he was fine. Yeah, get this stuff out in the open so we don't feel the need to hide in that day. So anyway, it says we have boldness to face him because, listen to this, because as he is, so are we in this world. What does that mean? Jesus was his authentic self. He didn't need to hide anything. That's why there's a statement that I make, which is true. And I might have to do a video about it. God will never lie to you. He has nothing to hide. Ain't that beautiful? He has nothing to hide. When you seek him with your whole heart, he tells you the truth. God, tell me the truth. What's going on in my heart? He'll tell you. But when we run and we hide and we don't want to confront what's going on in our own heart. There's a scripture that says that the man who hides his sin will not prosper. So we can hide from God by ignoring him. By not wanting to face him. Not wanting to pull out the word. Not wanting to even deal with him. I'm just going to drink. I'm going to smoke. I'm going to go shopping. Uh, and that was one of the things. I'm going to get to the 17th verse and then I'm going to get to an answer because it's after seven already. That was one of the major things <clears throat> that was happening with the highest part of the shutdown. We didn't have our escapism. <laughs> We didn't have our escapisms to run to. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Those of us with big families, all the kids was at home. The jobs were shut down. You had to work from home. If the job stayed open at all, we had to deal with some hard reality. And this is my family. And we couldn't hide. Interestingly enough, the alcohol sales tripled. The abuse rate went up also. The abuse rate went up with families, children, alcohol, drugs, because we had to slow down. And we had to take a hard look at what was happening in our family. Then we got to see why the teachers are calling us all the time. <clears throat> Don't nobody want to talk about that part. Let me get to this next scripture. I don't want to sit there too long, right? So we are bold. We're confident. Because we're not hiding anything. Our hands are cool. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Hands are clean. Now get this. Okay. Verse number 18. There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist, but full grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror. 
For fear brings with it the thought of punishment. And so he who is afraid has not reached full maturity of love. Is not yet grown into love's complete perfection. So he's not talking about being perfect. I just read from, I just read uh, 1 John 4, 16 through 18 in the Amplified Version. So that was the Amplified Version uh, uh, classic. Amplified Version classic of verse number 18. So he who, who fears has not grown into love's full maturity. So there's a maturity and a completeness in God's love. There's a foundational steadying peace in God's love that steady us. So it says you are, e number six, you are easily offended or embarrassed from discipline or correction. When you are stabilized in your sonship, in the love of God, you become an unoffendable person. Did anybody write that down? You become an unoffendable person. Why? Because your sonship in the Father never changes. Your sonship in the Father is steady. So correction has to come with your job, with your assignment, just tweaking and discipline. Now understand, remember who it's coming from. If it's coming from a hateful, bitter person, that's a different circumstance. But even then, even then, when you are solidified and stabilized in your sonship, you're not offended. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have to confront things and have hard conversations. That just means you understand that everything that happens outside of me has nothing to do with my sonship. I know the difference. Me, personally, I know the difference between sonship and assignment. Your assignment has to change. Now, there is an issue of attaching your identity to what you do. That's an orphan behavior also. When you attach your identity to what you do, then when you can't do what you do, your identity is fragmented. Moms, dads, do not attach your identity to being a parent. <laughs> Did that just help somebody? Parents, do not attach your identity to being a parent because your kids are going to have to grow up and move out. How do I know that that happens a lot? Because I see it all over social media. You have people who kids are 40 and 50 and their parents are posting baby pictures about them. I miss when my children were two and three. I don't. <laughs> I don't listen. No. That, no. Mm -mm. I don't miss it when my son was a child. <laughs> I enjoyed it in the moment, but I had to on purpose understand who I was. And God is like, who are you outside of being a mother? Outside of being a mother, outside of being a wife, that's all that I am. I was born to give birth to children and raise very good children. I'm like, that's a good thing, but you do know that your assignment and who you are as a daughter or a son of God is more than that, right? I mean, because your kids are going to have to grow up. 
Listen, if you don't get delivered from that, you will on purpose make your sons mama boys and make your daughters indebted to you. Case in point, then I'm going to get up off of here. And both of these beautiful women are gone. Whitney Houston did not raise her daughter to live without her. And let that sit right there. Beautiful women. But she did not raise her daughter to live without her. She made her daughter indebted to her. She kept her daughter so close and closed off. She made her daughter make her her world. And ain't no responses. Is that true? Who do you know in your life that's doing that to their kids? Is it you? Are you making your kids indebted to you? She made her daughter indebted to her. So when Whitney's life was gone, it's called surrogacy in the deliverance term. You make your child a surrogate husband, a surrogate wife, a surrogate part. You attach, you keep the umbilical cord attached to them. Yeah, yeah, and that can happen with fathers and daughters too, exactly. And you make them indebted to you. Like you are their savior and you are the only one that can help them. And when Whitney was gone. The daughter could not live without her. And that is false responsibility for the child. You're right. That is a burden. It's awful. But that is an orphan rejection mindset and we've heard people say I have children because they love me back my children won't reject me that's putting false responsibility on the child when the child is first born to love the parent to make the parent feel validated and loved there ain't nothing wrong with that but when it's outside of the correct context it becomes a weapon and it is toxic. It's toxic. That's where parent competes with the children. The parents don't like the child to move away. Yeah, it's horrible. horrible. The parent is always in between the, ch the children's relationships. So I did one video and it was about um, telling your adult kids the truth. And a lady responded to it by the way of, you know, she had six kids and, and most of them were grown. And I'm like, you got little kids, that's different. But not these grown people. These grown people 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. I'm here to help my children. And I'm going to be there. And I'm going to help them. I'm like if, they're, if, if they've been in an accident and they're maimed or something. Yes. But not you just out there bumping and grinding and doing your thing. And you run into mama every time you get in a, in a tight spot. I said that's enablement. But this is it. I said, that's an enablement. You are enabling them to stay stuck, number one. And number two, you helping them has nothing to do with them and has everything to do with you and your need to be needed. Wrongly related to the kids. Them kids are grown. 
I told my son, I love you, but you're not moving back here. Nope. And accident, something you got to, that's different. You know what I'm saying. But just because you want to save money because you're not, you, you're not managing your finance. And I told you spend over $150 a month for fast food. No, you're not moving back here. You're not doing it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, caregiving is different. But just because you want to be grown and you don't want to take responsibility for your life, you're not moving back here. Nope. Well, Mo, I said, listen, I don't care if you have to move into the Hotel Six. You better keep your job because you're not moving back here just because you're lazy and you don't want to accept responsibility for your life. All right, let's move to a quick answer. <laughs> That's how you break that up, right? Okay, listen. All right, so yesterday we went over praying for the revelation, my son. Wait, so if I move out, I have to. If I if I move out, I have to pay for my phone, my phone bill. Mm hmm. Or get you a track phone and pay month by month, cause you we're done. All right. Now to an answer. So yesterday we went over answer number one, pray for revelation. And maybe that's just where you need to stay for a while. Pray for the revelation of God's love to show you who you are in him. Listen, there's nothing we can do to earn his love. If you are a parent, okay, you know that when your child was born, we didn't give them a laundry list of do's. We need you to do this. We need you to do that. We have to allow Father God's love to so permeate our hearts. And stop rejecting Father's love. Stop rejecting His love. Stop rejecting His invitation to come and sit with Him for a little while. Stop rejecting the invitation to give him the, the tenth. Give him the tithe off of your day. You know you got all this other stuff to do. He said, but I just want to settle you. Let's just talk just for a few minutes. Even if it's in your car on the way to work. And before you go in, leave early. Or get up early. Well, y'all know I'm up early already. And just sit with dad for a little bit a good devotional and just talk to him about it. Let him settle your heart. Don't reject his invitation and quit rejecting his love. Quit thinking you're the exception to the rule and that his blood wasn't enough to cover your sin. That's a good word. Quit rejecting his love. Quit thinking that you are the exception to the rule and that you're so dirty and low down that there's no possible way he could love you. He said the only sin, listen, the only sin that would not be forgiven is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Everything else, every, everything else is forgivable. Everything. Everything. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is a whole nother deep subject. But get this. I can tell you what it's not. 
blasphemy against the Holy Spirit isn't sinning against God. It isn't sinning against Jesus. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is, is really kind of a hard thing to articulate because it's so unfathomable to do. You can't blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and then feel guilty. It doesn't exist. I, the only thing I can put up close to it is, is the acts of Lucifer. That's about the only thing that, that my mind can comprehend of what blasphemy against the Holy Spirit would look like. Because I'm not sure if any person has ever done that. It's possible, of course, because it stays said in the Word. But what does it look like? Because get this, even Judas, the one who turned Jesus in and betrayed Jesus, when Jesus saw him, went to him and kissed him on the cheek. Or Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek. And he said, where have you been, son? A uh, friend, I believe. And you know what? No, that's not. That's not blasphemy against the Holy Spirit either. It said, isn't it attributing the works of God to Satan? No. The works of God. He said, sins committed against God is forgivable. He said, all manner of sin is forgivable. Except that one. I believe it's so far reaching that those who have done it are not here to explain just how it was done. Let that sit there for a minute. Peter denied Jesus and he was accepted back. He wasn't accepted back. He was just accepted, period. He Does that make sense? Can you say that again? What part? I don't remember what it is. Oh my goodness. Yep, Judas was remorseful. I believe those that, oh, maybe that's it. I believe those who have blasphemed against the Holy Spirit are not here to tell us how it was done. I believe it's just that unarticulatable that they're not here to tell us how they did it. I believe, and this is just me talking, I believe if it is ever done, I'm sure in that person would probably feel like getting struck by lightning. Just absolutely an unarticulated event that they probably didn't live through. All right, so let me get to this one more note, then I got to get out of here, okay? All right, I'm going to go to note number three. It says, oh, okay, I thought it was saying that certain things of God are satanic, like tongues. Uh-uh, no, praying in tongues isn't satanic. That's in the Bible. And there are satanic tongues, but... Um, not in this uh what's the name it says isn't that amazing walking with jesus yeah 
Judas couldn't live with himself. He sure couldn't. Yeah. Okay, let's get to this point number three. Okay. So, yeah, I understand you, sis. All right, point number three. Listen, this is going to be very important. Then I'm going to get off here for real. Okay? It says, pray that conviction would alert you to negative words that are coming out of your mouth and holding you in bondage. It says Jesus never spoke in tongues, right? He said they would speak with new tongues. I don't know. I don't know if Jesus spoke in tongues. I pray in tongues. I do too. That's Holy Ghost power right there, baby. I pray in the spirit in a minute. In a hot minute. All right, listen. Tip number two, or this actually tip number three. Pray. I might do a video on this. Pray that Holy Spirit will come up. Pray that conviction would alert you to negative words that are coming out of your mouth and holding you in bondage. Repent, repent for any word curses you have spoken over yourself or others in the past. We've got to learn to catch ourselves. We got to learn to catch ourselves. So, Father, as I get ready to get off of this live this morning, God, I pray for sensitivity. Sensitivity to rejection thinking. Teach us, Holy Spirit, because it's it's all private. So no, no two people's... Um, healing journey is going to look the same. So let yourself off the hook. There's no comparison in this because that's a rejection-based mentality also. And be willing to be like the lady that went, excuse me, to the well to have a private conversation with the Lord. So God, I do pray this morning that as my friends get ready and go to work, Get ready and get their day started, God, that we are walking around with a deeper awareness of exactly how much you love us. God, let us not reject your love anymore. I really believe some of you guys are going to start hearing Holy Spirit just say, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And even say to yourself, God, you love me. I am loved. I am wanted. I'm anointed. I've been chosen for this season. You love me, God. You did not ask my opinion when you made me great. And I accept it. Show me how to walk in your grace, your mercy, and your love. Show me how to walk in your love, Lord. Show me how to think and act like you love me. Show me how to let go of stuff that don't even matter. When people flip me off in traffic, it just ain't that deep, God. Because you love me. Take a deep breath. God, teach us how to be responsive and not reactionary. Just going around reacting to stuff. Help us to hear your voice, Holy Spirit. Because you're going to ask us, now, is that true or is that a lie? God, we receive your love this morning and we honor you and we thank you, God. I thank you for all of my TikTok sisters and brothers that joined in this morning, God. We got to get back to you, back to our first love. We were just receiving your love. You're never too busy for us. Your lap is big enough for all your kids to sit in at the same time. You said in your word, when our mother and our father forsake us, then you will pick us up. God, so we let our parents off the hook because they didn't know. They were orphans too, God. They were orphans too. But right now, we run into your arms. We will let we let other orphans go in our lives. Our husbands, our wives, those people who, who hurt us and just say mean things. God, they don't know. They're orphan in their heart and orphan in their thinking. And they don't know. Help us to walk 
in the knowledge and understanding that we are not abandoned and that we are accepted fully in the beloved. Because when we accept and believe everything you say about us, everything about us will change. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I plan to be on tomorrow so we can finish this up. So we can, so tomorrow at um, my plan is 6 a.m. I'm going to start right on time. <laughs> Hopefully with the, uh, as little chit-chat as possible because I really want to bring some conclusion to this so we can get to some of those other notes. So the scriptures for today, let me say these scriptures if you happen, didn't get the scriptures, okay? The scriptures for today is John 14 and 18, okay? Jeremiah 23 and 29, about the word of God being fire and hammer. First John, no, no, excuse me, John 1 and 12. St. John 1 and 12. And then First John, 4, 16 through 18. Let me know if I need to repeat that really quick, okay? And um, yeah, those were the notes of the scriptures for today. Yep, 1 John, that's 1 John 4, 16 through 18. Yeah, oh, yep, yeah. uh-huh, that first one. Yep, 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 you're right. You're just typing it back out. That is it. That is it exactly. Jeremiah 23 and 29. We need God's word like fire and we need his word like a hammer. So I'm going to encourage you guys again. Go to the website. Get the morning confession book. It is for free. Uh, go to the place where you see the TikTok notes or free notes. The notes are free. Download the notes. Those are the notes that I'm going to be teaching from uh the rest, well, the rest of this week, tomorrow, and next week also, get them all. It's going to be a hodgepodge of different notes. The website is fruitandseed.com, one word, dot com, fruitandseed.com. Everything is on the home page, okay? Everything is on the home page. There's some TikTok teachings there also, if you want to. Also, a reminder, you guys, um... I'm going to have to put in an announcement. The due date to sign up for the 40-day soul fast is coming up pretty soon. I think I'm going to make it like uh, maybe the 20th, 20-something-ith of this month to sign up for the 40-day soul fast. Uh, that's found on the website also. Uh, very low cost. All you have to do is get the book. I will send the information to you. You're going to have handouts. And we're going to dig deep uh, with Dr. Cindy Trim. We're going to have the, the, the DVDs and a private Facebook group where you, we can communicate throughout the week. And we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be digging deep to get some real soul healing um, and, and becoming more authentic. And you'll be able to see me live in Zoom. And uh, I'll have a host with me also. And we'll be just tag teaming. And digging deep. Um, and that's it. So, also, there's a bunch of the resources there YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. A lot of places where you can see me talking and chit chatting and being me. Listen, baby, when you are, when you get to your authentic self, you ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. You just love being you. And that's a journey. And it's okay that you're on this journey. And I just want to help you and point you back to deity. I'm pointing you to deity. You want to know what my deity? My deity in heaven. Where your deity? My daddy loved me. My daddy, he, my daddy is amazing. What's your daddy? So anyway. Yep, no, we're not perfect. 
because we were not a mistake. Baby, you better tell the truth. That's a post. That's a message right there. We weren't meant to be perfect. There's only one. We weren't meant to be perfect. Anyway, I'm about done chatting for right now. So, y'all have a good day. I'll see y'all tomorrow so we can finish this up, bring some conclusion and some hope to you, okay? All right. That's all I got to say for now. I got to take care of my bird babies. It's cold here. It's it's so cold. It's cold. It's mad cold. When I go out, when I went outside yesterday, this is what I did. <laughs> then I had to get a grip and say, "Oh, I'm sorry, Lord." Thank you so much for me being here, God. I just praise you and I honor you, Father, for being here. It's so cold, mad cold. Man, it's cold out here. It's nose flaring cold. Oh, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. Oh, I thank you, Father, for allowing me to be here in this absolutely freezing weather. Anyway, get that song. The song is there, too, on the website. All right, I'm done chatting. I will talk to y'all tomorrow, 6 a.m. All right? Bye. Thank you. Bye. Ha, <laughs>